Happy New Year. My name is Robin Fisher and I am the rabbi at Beth Orr in South Dade. How happy are we to welcome in a new year of hope and healing. The year 2020 might be one we'd all prefer to forget. This year will go down as a year in history when a deadly virus made its way across the globe, striking millions of people and taking hundreds of thousands of lives. It was a virus that forced millions of people to lose their jobs and livelihoods and to retreat to the safety of their homes with little social contact. It was a virus that was exacerbated by power and politics and ego, and also one that highlighted deep historical race and ethnic discriminations. Although we are not at the end of the devastating impact of this virus, the release of the vaccines gives us some hope that an end may be near. But with the end, also comes an opportunity to reflect with the wisdom of 2020 hindsight, pun definitely intended, as we see highlighted in this week's Torah portion, Vayechi. Before his death, Jacob gathers all of his sons to offer them individual blessings and to make them promise that they will take him up after he dies to be buried in the cave of Machpelah in Hebron, where the rest of the family is buried. Soon after his death, they do just that, taking his remains to his final resting place in Hebron. And on their return back to Egypt, there's a midrash that tells us that Joseph stops along the way to look into the pit where his brothers had thrown him many years before. While peering into the pit, he stood up and prayed to himself, blessed is God who performed a miracle for me in this place. Joseph reflects on how his life has unfolded, from the dreams and his dream interpretations, to his being thrown into the pit, to his rise to power as the second in command under Pharaoh, and to his ability to protect his family from the great famine. He sees how all of the pieces miraculously fit together, attributing all that has happened to him to God's plan. I am sure that 20 years before when he was at the bottom of that pit, he could never have predicted how his life would unfold or that any blessings could possibly come from that dark place of abandonment and fear. Well, without being able to hear those sincere thoughts and prayers of Joseph, his brothers begin to imagine that he could be contemplating revenge against them, and they feel a sense of guilt and shame, too. Instead of confronting him directly to express remorse, the brothers send a fabricated message to Joseph, saying that their father told them to tell him to forgive them and be nice to them when he is gone. Well, Joseph knows that they made up that story and is moved to tears by his brother's fear and distrust of him. Two perspectives, two ways to reflect back on past challenges, one with fear and regret as if nothing has changed, and one with gratitude and perspective for all that has changed. Whenever we are in the midst of the darkness of our lives, it's near impossible to see any light at the end of the tunnel. We get through it, we survive, we just deal with it. But when we get to the other side of it, how many of us have been able to look back with the benefit of hindsight to see the blessings that have emerged, the blessings we couldn't have seen while living through them? And although most of us would not choose the struggle, we feel grateful for the blessings that have emerged nonetheless. As we embark upon a new year, we have the opportunity to reflect back on our own lives, especially this past year of 2020, with a renewed perspective. It might be too soon, I know, for some of us who have been hit harder than others, but there are blessings and much needed awakenings that have come from this past year and the dark shadow of this pandemic. We can look back with 2020 hindsight, with perspective and wisdom to see the blessings and the gifts that have emerged from our darkness. We can take note of the humanity that has percolated from hospital wards and city streets. We can commit to healing deep wounds of systemic racial discrimination that this pandemic has illuminated. We can admit how much our personal and our global consumption adversely impacts the environment and respond judicial, judiciously to its abuse. We can be grateful for all that we do have and we can embrace how our priorities have shifted and rebalanced. In closing out the final book of Genesis and the end of the secular year, may we all look back, not erasing the past, but seeing what blessings can inform our journey and pave the way for a better future. Let us shift our focus with 2020 hindsight 
so that this new year of 2021 is a year of turning our pain into healing, our losses into opportunities, and our hate into a love for all of humanity. Can you hear Ratzon? May it be God's will, and may it be our will as well. Shabbat Shalom.